You see them on every street corner and in every plaza, some as young as five years old. Quito has more than 100,000 shoeshine boys who work long hours to help support their families. For Father John Halligan, however, they are the key to ending the cycle of poverty in Ecuador. My name is John Halligan, and I'm, of course, one of the members of the directive team of the Working Boys Center here in Quito. In 1964, Halligan, a Jesuit priest from the South Bronx, was working with the indigenous poor in a province south of Quito when he was asked by his superior to assess the problem of shoeshine boys in the city. And we discovered that the kids were all uh, working kids, night and day. They were out there trying to make money to help their family survive. And so it was a shoe-in to make a plan, we thought. And so I gave him a plan, and next thing you know, uh, we started the Working Boys Center in the attic of the Church of the Compania. We started uh, thinking that it would be an easy job, you know, give these poor little kids uh, some catechism, a little bit of uh, food, uh, and then maybe some medical attention, and uh, technical training for jobs, you know, that was their, their big need. Eleven showed up the first day, but within just a few weeks, 250 boys were lining up each day. But we have a good opportunity with the working, the families of the working kids because they're a huge part of the world population and they're a shoe-in for building on because they already have the value of work, which is one of the basic uh, moral values for doing away with uh, the evil of poverty. Today, the Working Boys Center operates out of three buildings, spread throughout Quito, and serves more than 2,000 members. The center offers daycare, primary education, vocational training, special needs services, and adult literacy programs. It also offers medical and dental services and has trained more than 100 health promoters to educate the community. The center also serves about 35,000 meals per week offering members three meals a day, six days a week. There's not many programs like this in Latin America and in the developing world. It really tries to educate the whole person. The center has focused on weaknesses that we see in the people in certain areas, and so they're the 10 values that we have selected for work, and they are loyalty, personal formation, family, religion, education, economics, work, recreation, health, and housing. There's also a strong emphasis on service. Minga is a, an indigenous word here for a work game. All of the families are divided into groups. Every single Sunday, about five groups go out to each other's homes and help with whatever it is. Maybe they're gonna clear the land, maybe they're gonna actually put up the walls, maybe they'll pour a floor, a good number of center families have been able to put up their own house as a result of that program. The center is run by a team of directors, some of whom are former shoeshine boys themselves and more than 200 employees. The center also relies heavily on a steady stream of volunteers. Most important part of the whole thing because these are young folks who come from a foreign country, usually the United States, and they are role models for poor people, especially for the poor kids. The volunteers live in community with Father Halligan, Sister Miguel, and Sister Cindy. They commit to one year of service and are involved in all aspects of the center. Our volunteers have a tremendous impact or influence over our own students who uh, have to make a big act of faith in why should I study, why should I keep a budget, why should I take a bath, why should I have a plan for the future. Through all of their hard work, Father Halligan and his team have produced spectacular results. In a 2007 impact study, 65% of the respondents reported owning their own home after joining the center versus only 21% before. 95% of the men and 83% of the women are employed. 
In 1997 and again in 2002, the Working Boys Center was named the best technical school in the nation. The center is all about uh, enabling people to take charge of their own lives. The center has helped 6,000 families leave poverty behind. Yo cuando graduo quiero ir a trabajar y sacarle a mi familia adelante poner un taller mío. Soy nueva en el centro y para mí sí es bueno el centro. Me siento bien. Es muy bueno. Hace ahorrar, se compra cositas que se necesita. Eso es todo. Esos niños van a ser el día de mañana personas positivas para esta sociedad. Solo necesitan una oportunidad, una herramienta para que ellos el día de mañana van a cambiar esta sociedad. For me the most important is that uh, our young people can get a technical certificate and with that they can find a job, a decent job outside in Quito. They are helping people that cannot be helped by, by other means like microfinance and microinsurance. And I think that the institution is set up in such a way that they can continue for years and years. As the population of Quito continues to grow, so does the demand for services of the Working Boys Center. My dream is that we have an other center in the south of the city. A lot of people from south of, the, of Quito needs uh, the center, needs uh, education, needs the health care, needs uh, the food, of course. We are constantly striving to attract people to uh, uh, join us, finance a spread of the movement, become volunteers. Since the center's humble early days in the attic of the Campania Church, Father Halligan has shared his vision with the poorest and most vulnerable members of Quito and given them the tools they need to break out of poverty. Those who have worked for the center and benefited from its programs for nearly half a century now regard Father Halligan with the utmost appreciation and affection. Él ha sido y es y sigue siendo una persona que tiene una forma de poder ayudar, de poder entender más a, las, a los jóvenes, a los chicos, sobre cuál es verdaderamente nuestro papel. Father is our guide, is our example for life. He believes that if God wants to do the work, all we have to do is to do our part. Padre Juan is una persona única, is una persona que creo que es irreemplazable. Father Halligan is a, a person of great spiritual depth and a person with whom I've been privileged to work for. Father Halligan's movement has shown that it's possible to end the cycle of poverty through empowerment. Poverty can be wiped out, and we could wipe out poverty if you had more programs like ours. As a result of Father Halligan's vision, 6,000 families have been able to dramatically improve their lives, and countless more will do so in the future. Everybody uh, has become more in love with life, and they've discovered the big secret, how much we all need each other.